All right, here we are on our last page of the study guide for Unit 1, uh, which covers Sections 1A through 1E. So we've got this situation here. Henry spent $87 on, that should say, four shirts. How much did each shirt cost? Well, he spent $87 for all of them, and we want to know how much one shirt cost. We're going to take the $87 and divide it by four so that we can figure out how much one shirt costs. Four divides into eight twice. 4 times 2 is 8, so we subtract our 8, we get 0. Bring down our 7. 4 divides into 7 only one time. 1 times 4 is 4, so we subtract our 4 from 7, and we get 3. We don't want any leftovers, so we add a decimal point in both the quotient and the dividend in the answer and in the house and a zero only in one place, only in the number we're dividing into the dividend. Bring down the zero. Four divides into 37 times, because four times seven is 28. Subtract the 28, and we get two. Still not a zero, so we add a zero, bring it down, and four divides into 20, five times. 4 times 5 is 20, subtract the 20, and we're at 0. And so we see that Henry spent $21.75 on each shirt. Okay. Next one, each classroom in a school has space for 25 people. That's total people. A group of 310 students and 15 teachers attend this school. What, what is the fewest number of classrooms needed for all the teachers and students? There's no word there, aren't we? So first it says, write the numerical expression. That just means the problem for the total number of people in the school. So there are 310 students, plus there are 15 teachers for a total of 325 people. How many classrooms will they need? Well, we'll take our 325, and the problem told us that we can fit 25 people in each classroom. So we're going to divide the number of people that will fit in each classroom into the total number of people, and that will tell us how many classrooms we'll need for this school. 25 divides into 32 once. When we subtract 32 minus 25 is 7, bring down our 5. 25 divides into 75 three times. 3 times 25 is 75. Subtract and we get 0. And so we'll need 13 classrooms to house 325 people. All right, next section here. Identify the base and exponent below. So we remember base big, base big. So the base is the 2, and the exponent is the 3. And our line got bumped over here, didn't it? We'll just put right in there. So the base here is 15, base big, and the exponent is 7. Now we're on to solving the following problems. So the first one is 4 to the third. Don't let yourself be fooled into thinking that's 4 times 3. That's not how we write 4 times 3. This, remember, it's all about the base times the base times the base. Okay, so in this case, it's 4 to the third, so we should have three fours down here. And then don't add these, multiply these. So 4 times 4 is 16. Takes care of those two fours. And then 16 times 4 is 64, takes care of that. And so our final answer is 64. When you don't have a line to write on for your answer, circle your answer so that they're easy to find. Sometimes it's real hard to see what you actually think the answer is when you've got jumbled work there. Now this is 2 to the fifth, so it's the base times the base times the base times the base times the base. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if I do 2 times 2, I get 4, and then 4 times 2 is 8, and then 8 times 2 is 16, and then 16 times 2 is 32, and now I'm out of 2, so that's my final answer. Be careful when, when you're doing these problems, sometimes you want to add an extra 2 in there, so be careful about that. All right, order of operations, PEMDAS. Remember? Parentheses, exponents, multiply or divide in order from left to right, add or subtract in order from left to right. So we look at this, no parentheses, no exponents. Okay, then we're at multiply or divide. 
I've got a 3 times 4, which is 12. That takes care of this, the multiplication symbol, and the 4. But I've got to bring down the plus and the 12. Because doing 3 times 4 didn't get rid of that addition sign or that 12. And then 12 plus 12 is 24. And that's my final answer on that one. All right, next one. So again, parentheses, yep, I've got some right here. So I do that first, 10 minus 6. I'm sorry, 10 minus 4, which is 6. So I've taken care of this and this and this and the parentheses. I've got to bring everything else down, the division symbol, the 48, the plus symbol, and the 4 squared. So I did parentheses. Now I have to do exponents. There's an exponent, 4 squared. So 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16. So I've taken care of that now, and then I've got to bring down everything else. Now I'm up to multiply or divide in order from left to right. Well, here's a division problem. 48 divided by 6 is 8. So I've taken care of this, and this, and this. And now I'm going to add 16. And then 16 plus 8 is 24. So finally done. All right, so now we've got 6 times 2 squared plus 28 minus 5. Any parentheses? No. Nope. Any exponents? Yep, right there. 2 to the second power is 4. So I've got 6 times 4 plus 28 minus 5. We got rid of this and this. Next, multiply or divide? Yep, right here. So here's 24. Got rid of this and this and this. But we still have plus 28 and minus 5. All right, add or subtract in order from left to right. So we do the 24 plus the 28 first, which is going to give us 52 minus 5. And now we finally get down to 47. 52 minus 5 is 47. Okay, last one. Here we go. 5 times 28 divided by 7 minus 5. Parentheses, yep, right here. 28 divided by 7, which is 4. So we got rid of this this, this, and the parentheses. And we're left with this multiplication symbol and the 5, and the subtraction symbol and the 5. Now we have to multiply or divide. We've got a multiplication problem right here, so this is 20. That takes care of that, that, and that. We still have minus 5. Then 20 minus 5 is 15, and that's our final answer. All right, that's the study guide. We'll be having our test real soon, guys. So uh, if you have any questions about anything, make sure you bring them to class.